Today I'm going to show you how to make a tab test in Lightburn. If you make about three different size tabs and slots and then fit them together with this test tool, you can find the perfect size for any project that you're thinking of making. The first thing to do is determine the thickness of the material that you're using. This is some quarter inch plywood that comes from the home store and it measures a little bit over five millimeters in some spots and under in some others. Any plywood you get is going to be a little bit inconsistent so I'm going to just call this five millimeters and cut my slots and tabs to that dimension and because of the kerf when it's cut there'll be a slight difference in the size but that's what the test is for. Because the beam on your laser, if it's a diode laser, is usually kind of an oval shape. When you're cutting in the horizontal direction, it will cut a little bit wider than if you're cutting in the vertical direction. And if you're cutting on an angle or a curve, it'll be somewhere in between. So you just have to estimate some of these sizes and make a couple of tests and then you'll find the ones that work for you. So the first thing to do is draw a rectangle and let's make it 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters just because that's an even number and snap it down into the lower corner of your grid and then we'll make a smaller rectangle for one of the slots and we'll make that 20 millimeters up in the size box here you can change the size of any of these things that you draw and let's size it to 20 millimeters by 5 millimeters then you can align these with this vertical alignment tool and also align them horizontally just to kind of keep things neat and orderly. I've got some text already made up here, but you could make this about five millimeters in height and start labeling everything as you make it so you don't get mixed up. This will snap to the center of the side of that and then I'll use the arrow keys to move it down a consistent distance. Now I'm gonna copy this up using the arrow keys and Control D to make a copy. And I'll make another copy of it and move that down the same number of steps. That keeps everything kind of lined up vertically the next step is to change the text and the size of the slot. I'm going to make this one 19.84 because that's two times the height of the laser beam, which was 0.08, subtracted from the width, which was 20 millimeters. And I'll change the top one to 20.2. That would be about 0.1 over on each side in width. And that's a measurement that I've used before that seems like it works pretty well for allowing things to fit. So I'm just using some approximate measurements, 0.08, 0.1, and either subtracting them or adding them to each side of that pocket. And that's why we're making this test piece, so we can try them out with a couple different size tabs and see what fits the best. Now let's add the tabs. First double check everything in the size box. Just click on it and make sure that the size is right because sometimes they change a little bit on you for some reason. We'll make a copy with Control D and just move this up 
will align it to the center of the side of that box. You can see when the cursor changes to a little dot, that's when you're lined up in the center of the large rectangle. I'll move this one over, copy it, and just move it over to the side somewhere. I'll make a copy of this one and move it over to the side. And now if you hold down the shift key, you can rotate this to 90 degrees. It'll kind of lock in at the right angle. And then move it over. Both of them will line up with the center of both things on the center of the large rectangle. Rotate this one with the shift key. And move it over. And now if we just pick the small rectangle and center it, now by using the arrow key, I've set them at 2.5 millimeters, so if I arrow to the right, that'll move. And if I take this one and set it to the center where it locks in, and then move it back up with the arrow keys, it's lining itself up. That's something that you need to do in the settings. So now we've got everything lined up and we'll weld these shapes together by picking each one with the shift key. Pick the shape, then pick the other shape, and hit weld, and it welds them together. So you've created the tabs now. And the last thing that we're gonna do before we cut this is just fill at these corners just because it looks better it keeps things kind of organized looking. So now we've got this little test piece and we want to select everything and then we'll save a copy of it over into the scratch area. That way we'll be able to use these slots and tabs on other projects just by grabbing that slot or that tab and moving it wherever you want. You could build a box and put them anywhere on it that you wanted. Now let's duplicate this again and move it over and we're ready to cut this test piece. Before I send this to the laser, I wanna change the layers of these slots and put them on this pocket layer because then I can control the sequence of cuts in this test piece. The engraving will be done first and then the pockets will be cut out and then the outline will be cut out. So I can turn off the text and then just select the pockets using a shift key and put them on the pocket layer. It's set at the same cutting parameters as the cutout layer and I'll turn the engraving back on, and then I'm gonna regroup these so things don't get moved around on me. And then if I select both of them and hit this preview button, you'll be able to see how this is gonna cut, and if you hit play, it'll show you that the engraving will be done first, then the pockets, and then the outlines. Now that you have these pieces cut, you can try out the different sizes and find out which ones work best for you. I usually just fit together a 20 millimeter into the 19.84 and move it side to side and see how much movement you've got there. and find the one that fits with a little bit of movement but not too tight to get it in. And keep in mind that when you get multiple tabs trying to fit in when you're assembling another part, you want a little bit of movement in there. So really what I found to work the best on my tabs and on my machine is 19.84 on the pocket and 20.2 millimeters on the tab. And that's 
fits together nicely. I can still put a little bit of glue in there when it's done. And the depth is just about right. Though you could change that depth a little bit if you wanted to. So when you find the one that fits right for you, which for me is 20.2 and 19.84, then you should probably mark them on that little tool and just keep it over by your computer and then whenever you're making tabs you'll know what size to make them. If you found this information useful please subscribe to this channel and like the video and I'll see you next time.